In order for homes to become more affordable in the Boise market, home prices have to drop by 40%. Prices are falling, but not fast enough as interest rates are continuing to rise. So what does this mean for 2023? And in this video, we're gonna talk about how we're seeing affordability starting to come. It's not here yet, but it's coming. Welcome to the Good News Real Estate Channel, where we talk about real honest events going on in the real estate industry, as well as in the greater state of Idaho. So we're gonna look at three things. The sellers who are having a hard time exiting the market, why vacancies are driving the rental prices down, which is making it more affordable to you if you are in the rental market. And three, what does that mean as a landlord or as an investor and start entering into the first quarter of 2023? All right, so we're just gonna jump right into this. This article is from Deseret News. It talks about how the West real estate market continues to come down to Subscribe earth after now. two years of runaway prices. Day soaring of demand by buyers have gone away remote work opportunities are starting to dwindle as we're seeing people being called back to the workspace. As interest rates were down at 3%, now they have crossed the threshold of 7%. In this article, what I want to highlight, it says price cuts for homes for sale. Right now, more than two thirds of the Boise real estate market has had price reductions. Thing is, there's a lot of sellers right now, even real estate agents that are in denial that we're in this kind of correction. Commenting on our videos, you don't know what you're talking about, this market's the healthiest it's ever been. They're just either blind or they're just not seeing. Here, this article, according to Redfin, we're seeing more than two thirds of our homes have been slashed. And even some of you viewers have jumped on and said, hey, I've seen home prices getting slashed left and right, left and right. And I believe this is the reason why. According to this other news article from Salem News, the CEO and chief investment officer of investment Management Association said for affordability to come back down to, to 2020 levels, our homes have to correct 40%. Beginning of 2020, our interest rates were floating right around 3%. We're almost double that. Every 1%, essentially a buyer loses a 10% in their buying power. So starting at the beginning of 2022, when interest rates are at three, right now I think we're floating around the six and a half percent, 35% that homes have to correct. Is this house was listed for sale back in September. It sat vacant, according to the pictures it looked vacant. It sat on the market for two months until they ended up having to remove it, right? They had to essentially pay for two months of mortgage. Nobody's living there. Nobody's paying rent. And they turned around and they flipped it and put it on rent right here. We can see that this seller, as well as the seller before, they listed their house. They couldn't get the price they thought they could get, which they maybe could have got it back when the interest rates were 2.75, 3%. But now interest rates are up in the sixes. Money is more expensive, which means houses aren't going to sell for as much. Here's another house that they listed, according to Zillow, they listed the house for sale for 490,000. They let it sit on the market. They did a price reduction. Still nothing would happen. So they let it sit almost, not quite a month, three weeks. My guess is there was very little activity. Then encouraged them to turn on it and put it on, up for rent. They listed it for rent originally at $2,200. And now it's currently sitting on rent for $1,895. So that's a $300 change, just about a 13% decrease, 14% decrease from the beginning of October to now. But let's look at the point number two. Let's look at two other houses that one, an investor purchased just this year, two, person bought this year, and I don't know if they had to relocate or what, but then they listed their house and we're gonna look at, well, I think they listed it for rent because they couldn't sell it and break even. The reason why I bring this up, we're gonna look a little bit further in depth on houses and we're seeing that rents are being dropped. Rents are dropping and dropping, which is making it more affordable for those who are in the rental market, especially those who are, are relocating here. We've had conversations with many people that are gonna relocate here, rent for six months, maybe, maybe more, maybe less, but the rental market is becoming more affordable. And as we go into this, I wanna encourage you, if you're thinking about renting, don't just pay the rent that's listed. Go in and, and negotiate on your rental price because as these homes sent vacant, I think a landlord would rather take a loss every single month for a little bit of time than having to take the full loss. I wanna ask you guys, do you hear agents saying that this is the best time to buy? Do, they, do you hear agents say this is healthy? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. When I look at something like this, there's no way I can say this is a healthy market. This is a greatest market to buy in. Okay, so let's look at these other two houses. This is one that was very fascinating to me because this one, they bought it at the beginning of this year. Back in January, uh, it looks like it was listed for sale January 6th. That our market was still pretty moving right there. And two days it went pending and they sold in February 28th. So this is what I did. I just kind of want to walk you through what I did. I jumped to the uh, uh, Freddie Mac to figure out what was the interest rate. Uh, during that time when they bought the house. 
So they went under contract in January. So in January of 2022, the interest rates were about 3.55. So I went ahead and I plugged that into a sheet that we use whenever we're analyzing a rental property, whether it be multifamily or just um, a single family. So we plugged in right here. They are, their interest rate's gonna be 3.55. We're assuming that they were a first time home buyer because they lived in it a little bit and maybe they just put 3% down, 3.5% down as their down payment. We're assuming because back in January, they probably paid full price for that house uh, because our market was still hot. So we put in the asking price of 475. When we jump back over to Zillow, we see that they originally had it up for rent at the beginning of October at 2795. They've dropped it all the way down to 2395 now. So that's the number that I'm gonna plug in here. So 1800 square feet, 2395 is their rents. And when over here, we plug in taxes, right? You got plug in your taxes, insurance. This one, this particular property, they have a HOA that mows the front and the back lawn. And so their grounds maintenance is $900 a month. I'm assuming that they're paying a property manager and we're just throwing in an 8% mark there. This doesn't have any extras for uh, for if something breaks in the property or anything. So let's just jump, jump down here. This is brings down, this is a summary. The summary of, of how much income, how much annual expenses, how much is their debt service, what is their cash flow. According to this, they actually have a negative cash flow of $167 a month if they're paying for a property manager. What I wanna do is, so let's just say maybe they bought down their interest rate and it went down to 2.77. They're making $28 a month if they dropped it 2.77. If they turn around and then they decided, hey, I'm gonna manage it myself, they might be able to make a little bit more, they're making 220. But according to these pictures, it looks like there's somebody else that's managing it. I'm gonna show you why I believe that they put this up for rent rather than selling. So let's go ahead and jump um, into the MLS here. So in the MLS, what we see is a similar house sold on that street back in July for 420,000. Now, according to Zillow, let's jump back to Zillow real quick. According to Zillow, they probably paid close to 475 because it was, they bought it back in January. So they're, they're at a $50,000 loss. Just wanna pull one, one paragraph out from the National Association of Realtors article. They came in here and they said that individual investors or second home buyers who make up a lot of the cash sales, they said that they're up 15% from September, but they are down 17% year over year. There's another article that says that investor purchases are, are down 30% year over year over in the West. I'm gonna look at, okay, this house, this was listed at 400,000. They, they bought it back in October. Now, if they had a good realtor back in October, they probably spent about 5% less than the la um, last listing price because right now, if you're buying a house, you can negotiate on a house. So let's just assume they paid 5% less. I plugged in a $380,000 offer. They originally had it listed for rent at $2,395 right after they bought it, and now it's dropped down to $2,295. So back in October, let's jump real quick into Freddie's website to see what the interest rate would hold. In October, we're looking at 6.6. .6. Now keep in mind, when you're an investor and you buy an investment property, you are actually spending an extra half percent, maybe a full percent higher than the advertised rate just because it's an investment property. Not all the times, but most of the time. We're just gonna give him the benefit of this, these people have benefited out and say, instead of paying 6.66%, they're paying 7% on this loan. So they put 380, rents right now are 2295, but it's sitting vacant. Let's say he is gonna pay a management company to manage it, roughly 8%. Property taxes, insurance. After all that being said, he's losing $46 a month on this rental. So how is he gonna have to shave costs? Maybe he's gonna manage it himself. So let's take away the management fee. Now he's positive $137 a month. But what happens when something breaks? What happens when this happens? So what if he has to sit a whole nother month vacant? Why do I share this with you? I share this with you because in our market, investors have stopped. They're not completely out of the market, right? This guy just bought this or this gal or whoever they identify as. Properties aren't cash flowing at the affordability rate, right? They have to buy something that, that they could then rent cover their debt services, as well as maybe make it a little bit of cash flow. This last property that we looked at that we analyzed, they could be losing money right now. And that's assuming that they were able to buy down their interest rate and they were able to lock in a 7% interest rate and not a 7.5% interest rate or an 8% interest rate. So what does this mean for you? If you are looking at investing in real estate, you can't just buy something because it's a good deal. You have to be able to analyze it, look at, okay, what's the vacancy? How? What are my property taxes? All these different things that we break down. So we have high long-term rentals, we have high short-term rentals available. We also, based on that last video that we just did, high vacancy listings available. Sellers are having a hard time right now. I think there's a stagnation between buyers and sellers. Buyers aren't wanting to buy because they can't afford a three, $4,000 payment that maybe at the beginning of the year was only worth $2,000 or $1,500. Sellers stuck in this world that 
hey, we are we should sell our house back at what it should have sold when we had 3% interest rates, not realizing buyers have lost 20 to 30% of their buying power because of the interest rate increase, but yet they want to stay up here. And so we have this, this kind of duel, and, and I wonder who's going to break first. And if the Fed does a complete U-turn and drops, remember, they're going to have to drop quite a bit in order to keep this market going vertical. If you are a seller and you're on the market, you really need to think about what am I doing to get my house moved? Because if you stay stuck put and the feds continue to rise their interest rates, our buyer demand is going to continue to decline because affordability is not there. And what you could have sold it for today, you might not be able to sell for back, uh, going now into January, February, March. Other people in your circle that you hear you talking about, hey, I'm going to list my house in spring. This is when I'm going to put my house on. And you're waiting till spring to put your house on the market. Now you are going to be competing with those people, as well as the new construction that maybe hasn't sold, as well as the new construction that's getting finished and getting put on the market. And now you're going to have a whole lot more people that you're going to be fighting for maybe the couple buyers that are going to be looking for your same house. So you really need to be thinking about if you if waiting till the spring is the best option for you, if you're thinking about selling your house. All right, and if you're a buyer, keep in mind, I think eventually these sellers are gonna wake up and there's gonna be price reductions coming. Again, I don't have a crystal ball, but assuming that the Fed stays in their same position, that's the only way they can go or they pull the house off the market. So you will have opportunities.